Folks, I want to talk to you about the latter rain. The latter rain. How many know that there has been a counterfeit latter rain that has been poured out? It's not the true latter rain. It's been called the latter rain. They call it the latter rain movement. But it's not the Holy Ghost. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's another spirit. But I want to read to you the scripture concerning the genuine, the real, the authentic, the genuine latter rain that is coming. Glory to God. We've had the former rain. Amen. And we've had the moderate rain. But the latter rain is still yet to come. We need the latter rain to bring in the harvest. Amen. There's got to be the latter rain. I want to read several different scriptures to you throughout the Bible about the latter rain. Help us to get an understanding of what is yet to come. Deuteronomy chapter 11 beginning with verse 14. That I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. Job chapter 29 verse 23. And they waited for me as for the rain. And they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. I trust that you folks out there will treat Brother Joseph the same. That you will wait for me as the latter rain. That you will wait for me as the rain. That you need that rain. Amen. It's not enough to have the seed sown into your heart of God's word. You need the rain, praise God, to bring that seed to fruition. Hallelujah. Proverbs 16, verse 15. In the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. Hallelujah. I believe that we have found favor in the countenance of the king. Because we are in a great position in this hour to receive the latter rain. Amen. I trust that you are in a position yourself as you listen to this broadcast to receive the latter rain, the genuine latter rain of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Look at Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 3 with me for a moment. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain. And thou hast a whore's forehead, thou refusest to be ashamed. If you're not receiving the rain of the Holy Ghost in this hour, it might be that you fit into this verse of Scripture. There's a reason why... You're not receiving rain in this hour. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 24. Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God, that giveth rain, both the former and the latter, in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Because they did not fear the Lord, there was no latter rain. Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter rain, former rain, unto the earth. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord. How do you know you're following the Lord? It says, He shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter rain, in former rain unto the earth. How many know we receive the 
uh, the former rain on the day of Pentecost. Amen. There came a sound of a rushing mighty wind that filled all the house where they were sitting. Amen. They began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, this was a fulfillment of the, a partial fulfillment of the scripture in Joel. In the last days, God would pour out his Spirit upon all flesh. But when Peter quoted this, he said, in the last days, God would pour out of his Spirit. And how many know Paul the Apostle said, we've received the earnest of our inheritance until the fullness. So even Paul understood that the day of Pentecost was the former rain. Since Pentecost, we've had some moderate rain, like Azusa Street, that was moderate rain. In between, that was some of the moderate rain. But in these last days, the latter rain is coming. Now, I want you to understand about latter rain. Latter rain doesn't rain everywhere. Amen. Have you ever been in your yard and it's raining in your yard, but right next door to the, your neighbor, it's not rain, raining in there in the neighbor's yard? That's latter rain. It doesn't rain everywhere. The Bible talks about how the righteous are scarcely going to be saved. Amen. That means one here and one there. Not everywhere is it going to rain and not everywhere is there going to be a harvest. Only where the latter rain falls will there be a harvest. So, folks, you got to understand, you got to find favor in the eyes of the king if you're going to receive latter rain in this hour. Amen. I will assure you of this. Not every minister today is like a cloud of latter rain. There are many clouds without water in this hour, according to the scripture. Amen? Now, Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. When do you ask the Lord for rain? In the time of the latter rain. Are we in the time of the latter rain? I believe we are. So when, what are we supposed to, we're supposed to be asking? Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. If we're in the time of the latter rain, we should be asking the Lord. You have not because you ask not. We should be crying out to the Lord for the rain, amen? So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. Hallelujah. Have you been crying out to the Lord for rain? Have you been crying out, hungering and thirsting after righteousness? Brothers and sisters, in the Old Testament, God took care of the promised land. He reigned upon that land. He blessed that land. How many know you are that promised land in this hour? It's you. You, you are the land now. And God is filling you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God's desire is to give to you the Holy Ghost, to give you an inheritance, not a land in the physical, but you become his inheritance and he becomes our inheritance. He's redeeming the purchased possession in this hour. Amen. The redemption of the purchased possession. James chapter 5, verse 7. Be patient. Are you in a hurry? Are you anxious? Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth patient, patiently. He waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and he has long patience for it. What's he waiting for? What's he so patient about? Until he receive the early and the latter rain. In the time of latter rain, ask ye rain. Why isn't it raining? Why are not we receiving the latter rain yet? Why isn't God pouring out his spirit yet? Because we haven't asked. Amen. He said, ask in the time of latter rain. And the Lord, and the Lord, glory to God, will make bright clouds. He'll give us rain, brothers and sisters. But we've got to ask. Amen. You have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask a mist that you may consume it upon your lust. Listen, brothers and sisters, if we ask with a genuine heart, with an honest heart, with a real heart, with a pure heart, God will give us rain. 
hallelujah, to rain upon the seed, the good seed that's been sown in our hearts, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some are going to bring forth a hundred-fold harvest in this hour. Are you listening? Now, on the day of Pentecost, we receive the earnest. We receive the former rain. Now listen, the latter house is going to be greater than the former house. What God is about to do in these last days, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it unto us by his spirit. God is revealing to us in this hour what his plan is, is to have a bride. He's going to have those in this hour that many sons bringing many sons to glory like his own son. Amen? To the measure, the stature of the fullness of Christ. We need the latter rain, brothers and sisters, to bring the bride to fruition, to bring the overcomer to provision, to, per, per, to bring us to fullness. Are you listening? To fruition, total fruition, total fullness maturity, full maturity, the man-child, full maturity. Now listen, in the Old Testament, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and around the bottom of his garment, there were pomegranates and golden bells. And when he would go into the Holy of Holies, they could hear his sound because the bells would ring as he was ministering in the Holy of Holies. Now, the high priest, Aaron, the high priest, is a type of Jesus Christ, our great high priest. When he left that cross, when he left that cross, he went down into the regions of the damned, amen, and he took the keys out of the devil's hand. He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He took those keys, brothers and sisters, and he led captive captivity, amen. Praise God. He came back unto this earth. He met Mary on his way to the throne, And you know the story. She saw him. She turned around. She recognized it was him. Amen. He said, don't touch me, Mary. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Oh, glory to God. He was on his way to the Father. He was on his way to the throne. Hallelujah to God. And when he went into the Holy of Holies, like the high priest of the Old Testament, there came a sound, glory to God, a sound of a rushing mighty wind. What's that sound on the day of Pentecost? The high priest priest was in the Holy of Holies. He's alive, glory to God. Those bells tell us he's alive, hallelujah. But in these last days, just like the high priest would come back out of the Holy of Holies, so the Lord is coming back out. And the fullness of the Holy Ghost is going to be poured out, amen, as the Lord is coming out of his temple. The Lord is going to come out of his temple and the fullness of the Holy Ghost is going to be poured out. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy in these last days. What is that thing on the inside of those golden bells called? It's called a tongue. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, they spake with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The tongue is still an evidence of being filled with the Holy Ghost. There are those today that believe when they get saved, they get filled with the Holy Ghost, and they're the very ones that speak against tongues. I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, speaking in other tongues is still the evidence that the Holy Ghost has come into the temple, glory to God. There is still a sound, amen, an evidence that the Holy Ghost has come in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Brothers and sisters, if you're not speaking with other tongues, you've not been filled with the Holy Ghost yet. Hallelujah. That wind of the Holy Ghost, that wind of the Holy Ghost has not come in to the temple. You've not been filled with the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters, until you're speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives you utterance. And just because you speak with other tongues doesn't mean you've been filled with the Holy Ghost either. There's a counterfeit tongue. How many know that the devil has a tongue too? 
Oh, yes, there's demons out there that are giving people other tongues. And I've heard some of those tongues, and it makes my spirit crawl. I'm telling you, it makes me crawl makes me really get sick to my stomach when I hear those tongues that are not the Holy Ghost, that are not genuine. But there's a genuine tongue, the Holy Ghost. Amen. You will speak with other tongues as the Spirit will give you utterance when you get filled with the Holy Ghost. In these last days, God is pouring out the latter rain. Amen. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy glory to God. How many know that that great high priest, Jesus Christ, is coming again. He's going to come out, just like he went into the temple in heaven. He's coming out of the temple. Oh, yes, he's coming back. Hallelujah. He's coming back. Praise God. He's not coming alone. The scripture says there's going to be some that are going to ride with him on a white horse as they're coming back with him. But before he even comes back to this earth, he's coming out of the temple. He's coming with his bride to rapture the church in the middle of the tribulation. In the first three and a half years, see, the church is asleep and the church will sleep on and will not awake until the midnight hour, according to the scripture. The wise virgins did not awake to the midnight hour. At midnight, There was a cry made, Behold, the bride and groom cometh, go out to meet them. That's what the original Greek says, but the devil tried to hide that. He tried to hide that in the scripture, in the translation. He tried to keep that from getting in there. The bride and the groom cometh, go out to meet them. See, the wise virgins and the foolish virgins, those virgins are the processional that lights the way unto the marriage feast. How many know that this earth is where the marriage feast is going to take place? That is when the Lord pours out his judgment upon the wicked. That's the marriage feast. The church is only going to be a part of the marriage feast. They're going to miss the wedding, the union with Christ. Hallelujah to God. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. Right after that, it said, blessed are they that are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. There's two separate events. The church, all you ever hear them talk about is the supper of the Lamb. You never hear them talk about the wedding. You never hear them talk about a union. And they run around calling themselves the bride of Christ. And yet the Bible makes it clear, many are called, few are chosen. You don't choose yourself to be the bride. The Lord makes a choice. If you're still calling yourself the bride, you still don't understand. It's not your choice. It's his choice. Out of the many of his people, he's making a choice. Out of the many uh, lilies we see in the book of Song of Solomon, he's handpicking, he's choosing lilies out of all the lilies. He's gathering lilies. That word gather means to pick, to choose, choice, lilies out of all the lilies. What's the lily have to do with? Jesus said, consider the lilies how they grow. Are you learning to grow like the lily? Are you growing in grace? Are you learning to grow in grace and in beauty? Or are you still trying to toil, trying to make it happen, trying to make yourself grow, trying to do it yourself? Many toiling in this hour, just like the lily, just like the disciples out there in the boat toiling against a contrary wind. No, there's something much better than that, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Glory to God, the Lord of glory. Praise the Lord that we can be one of those lilies that simply learns how to abide in Christ. Abide in me. And if my words abide in you, you shall ask Ask ye rain in the time of latter rain, and the Lord shall make bright clouds, and he'll give us rain, glory to God, in the countenance of the great King of heaven. There's life, glory to God, and there is like a cloud of latter rain. 
in his favor. We need to find favor in the eyes of God. Amen. We see that Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord, but way before Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord, Enoch walked with God. He was not, for God took him. How many know that the bride that Enoch is a type of the bride of Christ, the remnant that's coming out of the church. And Noah is a type of the church as a whole, the family of God. Do you understand that? Noah was moved with fear, even as the church is going to be moved with fear. We see the church fleeing into the wilderness, running for her life. Same thing as Noah. But Enoch walked with God. He was not, for God took him. He had this testimony that he pleased God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And Enoch walked with God. He was not, for God took him. Are you listening? You rather be like Enoch or you rather be like Noah? It's your choice. Enoch received by revelation from God that God was preparing to pour out his wrath long before Noah found out about it. Are you listening? Long before Noah knew anything about God getting ready to flood the earth, Enoch had received a word from God. He named his son after that revelation. His son's name, Methuselah, means when he is gone, it shall come. How many know that Methuselah died the day the flood came upon the earth and destroyed the wicked? Oh, yes, the day that Methuselah died, God gave Enoch a revelation. Are you listening? There is a counterfeit ladder rain on the earth right now, a kundalini spirit. It's of the devil. It involves yoga. It involves the esoteric teachings going all the way back to Babylon. But there's a real ladder rain coming. In these last days, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Now, Paul said, we received the earnest until the fullness. How many of you out there have received the earnest of the inheritance? The fullness is coming. But you're not going to receive the fullness if you haven't first been prepared by the earnest. Did you know the earnest of the inheritance is the dowry of the bride price? Did you know in the parable Jesus spoke of the woman that lost a piece of <coughs> a piece of the silver she or she lost a uh, one of the coins not silver it was gold i believe but the coin she lost one of her coins that was the dowry she had lost part of the dowry how many know the church today is neglecting something they've lost something they're missing something they don't have the earnest until the fullness they don't understand that they need to understand they have to have the earnest to have the fullness it's not that the true church doesn't have the earnest they've been filled with the holy ghost but they're asleep they're asleep. But there are those today that have been saved as by fire. They're, they're saved, but they're not filled with the Holy Ghost. They don't have the earnest. And those are the ones that are going to go through great tribulation. They're going to have to be beheaded for the testimony of Jesus Christ. But the true church of Jesus Christ that's filled with the Holy Ghost, that has the earnest, but has not the knowledge of the truth about the fullness they think they've got it all. I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I got it all. No, there's the fullness still coming. Fullness still coming. Peter said on the day of Pentecost, this is that which the prophet Joel spoke. In the last days, God will pour out of his spirit. When you pour out of a glass of water, it's not the whole glass. It's just 
some of the water in that glass. But when you pour out the whole glass, glory to God, that's the fullness of that glass. And God has yet to pour out the fullness of the Holy Ghost. And if God could do what he did on the day of Pentecost with a few fishermen, what can God do in these last days? Hallelujah. When he pours out the fullness of his spirit, the fullness of the Holy Ghost. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the latter house is going to be great greater than the former house. It'll be the latter rain and the former rain together. We've seen the moderate rain and we saw what God could do at Zusa Street and through that time, that movement of the Holy Ghost and God pouring out his spirit at that time, but nothing comparing to what's coming in these last days. We are in the last of the last days. We are in the last hour upon this planet. And God is preparing to pour out the fullness of the Holy Ghost. How many know we need the rain? We need the rain. Mary had the word. All she needed was the Holy Ghost to overshadow her. And that which shall be conceived in you shall be of the Holy Ghost. We need the overshadowing of the cloud of the God of heaven. Amen. And dwelling in that secret place of the Most High, under the shadow of the Almighty, under His cloud. We need the latter rain in this hour, brothers and sisters, to come to fruition, to come to fullness, to come to the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. It's not what you and I can produce, brothers and sisters. God is going to produce it in this hour by the power power of the Holy Ghost, through the power of His Word and the power of the Holy Ghost, God is going to have a bride in this hour to the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ. You can't produce it. I can't produce it, but we can be recipients of his grace. We can be recipients, recipients participate and receive of the Holy Ghost in this hour. Receive all that God has promised. Amen. All the promises of God are yea and amen to them that believe. You've got to believe, brothers and sisters. In these last days, the church is asleep. Most won't even hear this message. But I thank God for you out there that have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. God is pouring out the fullness of His Spirit in this hour. Amen. Hallelujah. Make sure that you've got the seed. Amen. The good seed. Not just 30, not just 60, but go all the way. Make sure you have all the truth planted in your heart, the good seed of his word, planted in good heart and an honest heart and getting ready for the rain. Ask ye for the rain. Ask for the latter rain. God's getting ready to pour out that latter rain. But he's he's listening. God is listening for a cry. God is listening for somebody to ask in an earnest asking. Ask for the latter rain in the time of of latter rain and God will make bright clouds and he will send us the latter rain oh hallelujah to God my brothers and sisters that are listening in Africa cry out to God for the latter rain my brothers and sisters that are listening all over this earth right now cry out for the latter rain there needs to be a cry for the latter rain we've seen a latter rain in this hour but it's a counterfeit it's not real it's a mixture and it's of the devil. It's not of God. There's people that say belly up to the Holy Ghost bar. That's not the Holy Ghost. That's of the devil. Those that are uh, barking like dogs and cackling like hens and carrying on in these Rick Joyner meetings and Kansas City prophets. That's not the true Holy Ghost. That's not the latter rain. The true latter rain of the Holy Ghost is going to be poured out in this hour. The genuine is coming. The real is coming. Hallelujah to God. The real Holy Ghost that empowers men and women to live holy before God is coming in this hour. Hallelujah. Let us return unto the Lord. Then we shall know if we follow on to know the Lord. How are we going to know? He's coming as the latter rain. Glory to God. The latter rain is coming. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Keep your ears in tune, brothers and sisters. God bless you. 
Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus.